we're going to learn is the balance beam scale. Each student station has their own balance beam scale and a digital scale. We're going to demonstrate the balance beam scale right now. In the bakery, we use formulas, and formulas allow us to raise and lower the size of the batch of the product we're making. Now, recipes pretty typically used at home. Formulas are in the commercial bakery. This is our balance beam scale that was down below this workstation. Uh, what it works, we work in U.S. measurements, not in metric. Uh, what we have is it's balanced right now. Each uh, balance beam scale comes with a hopper and a counterweight. What those allows us to do is do larger quantities of flour and sugar, um, all working off of the weights. We, you'll have a series of weights down below. And also what I want to show you is on the balance beam scale itself, it has a bar that goes across that is a pound. It's broken up into quarter ounces, and so we could go from, a, from zero right now to one ounce, and then it goes all the way across to 16. But so to say I need, for example, four ounces, I'm gonna bring it over and drop it on the four. And that's gonna allow me to scale out, if I wanna put on my hopper and my counterweight, I would fill it with, let's say I wanna come in and fill it with sugar. It will start to balance itself out, which is too heavy, so we're gonna come in here and remove some. I want to get it just right. I'm going to continue to add product until it actually balances itself out, and that will give us four ounces of sugar. How to use the digital scale? There'll be a digital scale at every student bench. What we need to do first is turn it on, which is the red button in the upper left, and let it take a second or two to adjust itself. Uh, we have US and metric uh, measurements on this digital scale. What we want to be able to do is through the mode button on the upper right, we can scroll through and see the different ways that we can measure. And you want to make sure you're measuring uh, where you belong, whether it be pounds and ounces or grams. So just a note to self. What we're able to do um, with the digital scale is we're going to put a mise en place cup on, which has a weight. And we don't want it to be a weight, a part of our cookie batter. So we're going to zero it out, and zeroing it out means we're just going to get the quantity of the product, and we're going to do sugar, and we're going to look and see we did four ounces of sugar on the balance beam scale, and you can just see how we can come right in and do four, oop, I'm a little over, four on the digital scale, and it's very precise and very easy to use. We're going to learn how to mise en place and use the balance beam scale. And one of the first products you're gonna make are the chocolate chip cookies or chocolate chunk cookies, however you wanna make them. Uh, so we're gonna work off of our formula that you've been given and we're gonna scale up the balance beam. We're gonna do it together. We're gonna to start at the top of our formula. So if you look at the very top, we start with our butter. Uh, I'm gonna start with the butter and work my way down. I have a sheet pan over here to the side. And what I wanna be able to do is every time I mise en place an item, is put it then on the sheet pan that has parchment that's been labeled so I can stay organized. Mise en place means everything in its place. I live by it both personally and professionally, and you're going to too. We want to stay very organized, because that means each time we mise en place our products, we know we have the exact ingredients that are going to go in. Baking is chemistry, and we have to stay very organized. So here we go. So we're going to do it together, and we'll see how I do. I have a whiteboard marker, which I like to have. Uh, chefs love Sharpies and whiteboard markers, so I'm going to hold this to the side because you can write on your mise en place cups exactly what the quantity and the product is and it will wash off, so I love that. So we're going to start, I need 8.5 ounces of butter, and I think what I'll do is I'll come down here and move my bar across to the, oh that's 10, there's my 8.5, and, and what I'm going to do is there's four notches within this bar and that's my quarter ounces. I'm going to go to the 8 and go one, two notch, and that's going to give me 8.5 ounces. So I'm going to come in here and scale it, and I want a cup to put it in, so I'm going to put it over here because it's the first item I'm going to scale. Let's see where I'm at here. And I know I need eight and a half, and then that's going to get my it's a little heavy. And you have to make sure that you, you know you have your hopper on, but you also have to have your counterbalance. It's super important. Must remember, and that's pretty good. You can see I'm balancing out. Uh, it's even. 
Uh, and that means I have eight and a half ounces. So I have this cup here. I'm going to add my butter right over here. I'm going to put this butter away. Uh, pretty typically, you'll have your ingredients up at your bench, and you'll be ready to scale. So next item I have is shortening. Uh, shortening I'm going to do with, I'm going to take off my popper and my counterweight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two deli cups that will even and balance themselves out. And I'm going to bring this over here to the zero every time, which is really important to remember. With shortening, as you use the shortening bin, you want to make sure you wear a glove each time. So it says for shortening, I need 3.75. So I'm going to come over here to the three and go three notches over. That's the four. I want to go three. So I need 3.75. So I'm going to come in here and scale, making sure I'm wearing a glove. Drop some more in there. Oops. I'm close. Now I'm close. Okay, so close. There it is. So there I balance out. I don't want to waste him. He needs to go in there because he is part of my product. I'm going to go ahead and take this glove off. Look at that. And then what that means is I have my shortening, and that's next on my list, and I'm going to make sure I keep it nice and organized on my bench. Uh, next I have granulated sugar, which is 9 ounces. I'm going to go maybe a little bit bigger container. Let's keep my containers separate here. Sometimes they can get stuck together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. I'm going to realize that my granulated sugar, I need nine ounces. I'm going to come over here and place it on the nine. I'm going to go either side. I'm going to bring my sugar over here, and I'm going to make sure I get all the sugar in the cup. I don't want it all over the counter, all over the scale itself. It's important to get all the sugar that you're going to use into there you go. oh there I am I knew that was going to happen it's so funny where it comes out of nowhere there I am oh, still a little heavy and maybe I want to add a little bit more to kind of bring that over to a little bit more weight to it so there's my nine ounces of my sugar I'm going to go through and scale the entire product so then I have sugar and then I'm going to go down and each time I look at my next item, I scale it and then I bring it over and I place it on a sheet pan. And I'm going to show you this sheet pan that I have the product item and my name on it. It's very important to stay organized and to do that each time you meet some plus, make sure you've checked the next item off on your list. I also like the fact that we can then come in here and if I wanted to, if I was me plusing and setting it overnight, I could put a lid on it and then I could put my shortening and my quantity at 3.75 ounces and know exactly as I come back the next day and want to go back over the formula I know I have shortening and it's the correct weight and it's ready to go for the next day so that's how we're going to mise and place every formula that's given we're going to make sure we do it in an organized orderly fashion. I wanted to show you a really great looking sheet pan of mise en place. You can see it's all labeled uh, it's important to follow the formula, and you can see from the formula to the left, we have all the ingredients that are all then labeled with what the product is and the ounce weight. It makes it really easy to come back the next day, if you've mise en place, to come back in and make sure all your ingredients are correct and you're ready to go and ready to mix. We're going to learn how to use the seven quart mixer. It will be in each of the students' benches. We're going to pull the power from up above. And we need to pull the power cord down and listen for a click. What that means is that's going to hold that um, power uh, steady and we'll lock it into place. We're going to go ahead and look behind. And it's super important to remember to plug your mixer in because we always think it's not working and then we realize we haven't plugged it in yet. So we've got to make sure we plug it in. What you're going to learn how to use this is a really nice piece of commercial equipment. Um, it comes from three separate tools that uh, do different um, mixing methods for us uh, with the mixer. Uh, we have a dough hook, which just like it sounds, um, mixes dough for us and does a beautiful job. We have a whip for any of our whipping, and our paddle is used to cream, um, and we're going to do that with our chocolate chip cookies. Uh, it's a great creaming method and a great tool for incorporating. Uh, the mixer has an arm that raises and lowers it on the right hand side and down below when we drop it it's when we can scrape it and, and we're going to take it on and off. The bowl itself has two uh, side posts where we lock it in 
You can see the bowl's got two sides to it and a little spot in back where we're going to make sure and lock the bowl into place. Super important to make sure that the bowl is locked into place. That's for safety and security. We're going to go ahead and add our paddle attachment. You can see it's from up above. A little knot on there. We're going to drop it in and we're going to turn it and lock it in to make sure it's on. We're going to lift the bowl up and in lifting the bowl up to the left, what we're going to do is our speeds. What you have to learn to do is incorporate your speeds very low and slow. There it is. Just like that. That was a pretty good example. Uh, the faster you do it, um, the more it doesn't like it, and so uh, it's really important for the motor to, to increase its speed at a much slower pace, and so that's really important to remember when you're using the mixer. If you kind of push it along and want it to go too fast, it's not going to start just like it did for me. So I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to lower my bowl, and I'm going to remove my paddle, and that is the 7-quart mixer that will be at your bench.